Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. This video is about how the exchange interactions and uh, we look at 2D systems and metamagnets. Uh, so this is for the vampire workshop. I'm Mara and I hope you enjoy this video. I apologize the camera is not really working so it's just my voice and the slides but I hope we'll be useful like this. Um, so we start from the magnetic Hamiltonian, which so far in the previous tutorials uh, we have seen that it can include just um, bilinear exchange terms. So you basically have coupling between neighboring spins and you couple this via this exchange matrix, uh, which can be isotropic or you can also have of diagonal terms and uh, more interesting effects here. Uh, however, there are systems where it has been shown that uh, high order exchange interactions in the forms of biquadratic exchange and four spin exchange can be important. And more precisely, uh, what is high order exchange? So this exchange appears from electron hopping between neighboring spins. More precisely, we have four electron hopping and depending how many neighboring spins you involve, we can have a biquadratic exchange as here, which involves just two spins three spins and four spins. So this is a four spin exchange. Why I, are these interactions important if, is that they scale with the magnetic moment to the fourth order in comparison with other type of interactions which scale only with the second order with the squared uh, magnetic moment. So when you have competing interactions this can be to interesting this can lead to interesting effects such as phase transitions as we will see as we will see in ion rhodium. Um, and to construct these interactions, uh, in the case, for example, in the 3D case of four spin exchange, you need to be very careful. Uh, so this is one example of how you construct four spin interaction for a simple cubic system, which is iron rhodium. Uh, so this has been this uh, graph and the parameter transition has been taken from this paper by Dr. Joe Park and Professor Russian Trail. Um, so each spin will be included in eight such quartets and then you perform a permutation over each over each quartet. So in total, each spin will be included in 32 nearest neighbors interactions. For the bicotratic exchange, we choose to apply this to a 2D magnetic system. So uh, 2D magnetic materials have been just recently discovered, uh, just in 2017, and they present all sorts of interesting phenomena. Um, for example, in this um, in this paper here, by for example, in this paper here, uh, they show that uh, in this paper here it summarized uh, possible effects appearing at the two D level. Um, so, for example, you can control the magnetic properties at the two D level via strain, gating, and so on. You can twist uh, two of these materials and form moiré patterns and. Yeah, it's very, you can also excite the system uh, with um, laser pulses and so on. And recently it has been uh, shown in this paper here uh, that these systems have uh, non-negligible biquadratic exchange interactions. So you need to consider these high order exchanges at the 2D level. So um, the 2D system we have chosen for this tutorial is chromium trichloride. Uh, this is an example of field cooling simulation, and we observe that we observe in this system that um, uh, we can create what are called merons and antimerons, so some topologically protected spin structures, and we can also have all sorts of event, interesting events happening, uh, like creation or anni annihilation, as shown here. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty interesting system to look at. This is uh, the input for a chromium trichloride unit cell file. Uh, so here we specify the atom. So it's a 2D system. It's a 2D system. It's a honeycomb lattice. Uh, here we specify the exchange interaction. So the bilinear exchange. And after we specify all the bilinear exchange interaction, we can then uh, specify the biquadratic exchange as it is formed here. And for this particular material, it's important to enable uh, dipole interactions um, because some of these structures appear from, from the competition with uh, dipolar interactions. 
so yeah, let's now move to the tutorial on how to set up such simulation. So again, for the sake of simplicity, I've already prepared here the inputs. You you can find them on on the GitHub uh, link for the vampire for the vampire workshop. So uh, here is the code I have downloaded it from GitHub. Um, so the higher order, the force pin interaction is implemented, I believe, only on the release branch. So you need to be here on the release branch. You can do that with git checkout um, release. Okay, we're already on release. We compile the code. I've already compiled it here. And we go back to our folder and we copy the executable yeah okay so let's first look a bit look a bit on the um, input files so these are exam exactly as the one presented in the powerpoint uh here we do a ma magnetization versus temperature curve so we use the program called curie temperature and a monte carlo integrator as shown here so monte carlo curie temperature we enable a uh, dipolar interaction as shown here. Uh, we do 10,000 and 10,000 uh, equilibration loop time steps. However, you want this number to be as, as big as possible to have accurate results. But again, for the sake of the tutorial, we'll keep this relatively low. Um, this 2D system have a low curie temperature, so it's, um, it's enough to go just to 30 degrees uh, Kelvin uh, for the temperature loop and we can look at the temperature and mean magnetization legs and plot that um, so in the UCF file we see that we already have the here the isotropic biquadratic exchange interactions uh, so these are enabled uh, so let's have a look let's run this let's run uh, while this is running, we can plot it. So we can plot temperature and mean magnetization length. Coel also involves um, dipolar interactions, which th those are more computationally expensive. Uh, but we can check out how the results should look like. Um, so this is the case with bi-quadratic. Um, similarly, you can also delete the biquadratic effect, the biquadratic interaction. And so you can delete this part here and see how uh, and see how the inclusion of uh, the biquadratic uh, interaction changed the result of your simulation. The results should look like this for those particular um, conditions. So we see that there is a relatively big change in the Curie temperature with and without a biquadratic exchange. So the next uh, part of the tutorial is referring to the iron rhodium metamagnet. Um, so in 2005, um, Oleg Miasov has shown that uh, the nonlinear behavior of rhodium can lead to high order exchange interaction. And he suggests that the first order phase transition could be driven by the competition between bilinear and high-order exchange interaction. And later on, um, Joe Buck and Roy Chantrell have shown this. Iron Doom still presents a lot of interest in the community um, because during the phase transition, there is also a lattice expansion. So it was not very clear uh, whether the magnetic or the lattice um, phase where the magnetic system or the lattice system triggers the phase transition and yeah it's still a very interesting material to study and in terms of the implementation for the four spin quartets uh, what we need to define is uh, two cutoff distances four spin cutoff distances which are given by this uh, four spin cutoff one and four spin cutoff two so this re re refer to the distance between these atoms on so this simple cubic case one and five, um, one, two, and one, three. 
and the second cutoff is then the distance between the atoms 5, 3, 3, 2 and 5, 2. And for example, in the case of uh, FCC system, as shown here, both of these cutoffs are equal. And how, this is how you obtain one four spin interaction. And then you permute all of these interactions and afterwards store them for the rest of the calculation. Okay, so this uh, tutorial will be focusing on ion rhodium. So you already have uh, the material and you see a file for the system. The four spin exchange strength is specified in the material file as here. So in this case, it's negative, which gives an antiferromagnetic uh, ground state. Um, yeah, and for and the exchange cutoffs, the four spin cutoff are uh, specified in the input file. So now let's go to the practical example. So again, I have it here. So we have the material file as I shown you in the um, the previous in the in the presentation, um, and in the input file that you have the UCF file, which for iron rhodium needs to contain uh, nearest neighbor and next nearest neighbor interactions, and these values are from the paper by uh, Buck and Chantrell. Um, and then we we just set a field cooling simulation. So we have set here the system size uh, to 12 by 12 by 12 uh, unit cells. So um, the unit cell size has been normalized to one just for uh, simplicity. And um, we specify here the unit cell file and the material file. Uh, we set up the four spin cutoffs. Again, um, these are normalized to the unit cell length. Uh, so in the case of the simple cubic system, uh, the first cutoff is just the length of the unit cell. And then the second, second cutoff is square root of 2, so 1.41. We perform a field cooling simulation over uh, 100,000 times. They start from 800 Kelvin going to 0 Kelvin in... 0 0.1 nanometer nanoseconds uh, with the linear function. All right, and we look at the temperature and the magnetization of the system. So let's run this. We run the field cooling simulation again using your favorite tool, plotting tool. Uh, using two, this is temperature and then magnetization. We have four columns. So we can look at the length of the magnetization, which is three, four, five, six, column six with line points. Okay, so already we've seen that um, the system has reached to about um, 270 Kelvin. We see the phase transition. So in this, in this re thermal regime, the system is ferro. Then it becomes antiferromagnetic at lower temperatures. Plot this again. Okay, and simulation is finished. Um, yeah, so we have, in principle, in this part, the system is antiferromagnetic at low temperature, so we can check that out. But, uh, we have actually outputted as well the configuration of the spins. Um, so there are these files here, so we can plot the spins. Um, I'll just plot it very quickly uh, with junior plot, however, but you can use um, the VDC tool provided by the code. Just put here in test.data. Then we... So this test.data the data, uh, includes the position and the spin values for the system. The first line, it's the total number of atoms, so we just delete that. Now we can plot it. Um, so 3, 4, 5 represents the x, y, z position, then column 8 is the s, z, the spin value on z. With points, palette, and just put circles. 
<laughs> so we see this is the low last uh, spin file. So this is the low temperature regime, and we see actually the antiferromagnet forming here. So um, with kind of with the yellow are the spin up, and with the black are the spin down atoms. Uh, maybe it's easier to look at this in 2D. So I'll just plot. This is X, Y, and then again the spin. So we have this uh, checkerboard um, spin uh, orientation. So corresponding to a uh, antiferromagnet. And if we look as well on the Z, so we put here column five, which is Z. Again, we have this checkerboard um, order here. So yeah, so for this particular case, which is uh, ion rhodium, uh, the bilinear exchanges are positive, so they give a ferromagnetic contribution, and uh, and the and the four spin exchange is antiferromagnetic, so it's uh, negative here. So what happens is that a low temperature, uh, the four spin exchange. Um, is predominant and uh, however while increasing temperature the fluctuations become more strong in the four spin term because this scales with the fourth order so then the bilinear term uh, takes over and leads to the a ferromagnetic state so this is how you explain the first order phase transition in iron rhodium and you can also check out our paper here which uses this uh, implementation um, to study iron rhodium so with that, thank you very much for your attention and I hope you find it useful.